the Niger Delta area of what later became Nigeria had unique structures. The place is called Niger Delta in the sense that that, was, that, that, that area was the termination point or the, 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 the ending point of the flowing pattern of the, the mighty river Niger. The mighty river Niger emptied in himself, em, emptied itself into the Atlantic Ocean from the Niger Delta region. So that gave the area the name Niger Delta area. And uh, today it is in the south south of what is now Nigeria. Now, now uh, and during the pre-colonial period and also the colonial period, the, 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 the Europeans, precisely the British, did a lot of businesses with Africans in those areas. So the emergence or the advancement of the business or trade relationship between the Europeans and Africans in this area led to the creation of some city-states in the coastal, core coastal part of the area. And this encouraged the migration towards the coastal areas. The transatlantic slave trade was also conducted within the, this area. And this brought about a lot of fortune, a lot of financial acquisition, which brought also challenges in control. So to bridge these challenges, most of those areas set up a political, a socio-political and economic system called the house system. But before we look at this house system, let us look at the, the, uh, some of the city-states that were created based on this situation or based on the migration towards the core coastal areas. Some of these city-states were Akasa, uh, Wari, Sapele, Brass, Tuan, Nembe, Buguma, Abonema, Bakana, Boni, Creek Town, Henshaw Town, Duke Town, and some other ones. So with this creation of the city-states, the transformation of the area became very realistic. And then this transformation brought challenges of control, leading to the establishment of the city-states. So a house, a house city-states, or a house system, which was a political structure set up in these city-states, was made up of different groups under the control of a head or a chief. Let me actually read the write-up of uh, Jesse Anele, which will make you to understand uh, it better. He stated that there were usually four classes in a house, which was the chief, the sub-chiefs, the free men, and the slaves. The division into classes was not a rigid one and a dynamic and successful slave could rise to become the head of a house. Let me read, read it again. There were usually four classes in a house. The chief, the sub-chiefs, the free men, and the slaves. The division into classes was not a rigid one. And a dynamic and successful slave could rise to become the head of a house. And then this, this was what, what um, uh, the renowned Jaja of Opobo utilized. He was a slave, but he grew up under a, 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 one of the uh, houses, structures, in what later became um, the became part of what today River State in Nigeria. When he grew up, he was so hardworking, so influential that he got to a point of being the head and even established his own house. Well, the, 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 the heads of houses formed a sort of advisory council which 
we are working with the king. So each city state had a king. And he was working with the head of different houses. So the high house may not surely really be only about a, a, an extended family structure. No. There were different, even persons, even, even slaves that we are acquired, we are all part of the house. And everybody was given the opportunity to get involved in economic activities. But they pay homage or they were under the control of the chief or the head of each house. And they looked out for each other. Why the head of the house works with the king in order to maintain stability in their own city-state. I think I've mentioned some of the city-states. Now the issue was this. The major challenge that these people faced was that each or because of the house divisions, there were always pressures of control. There were always conflicts based on business interests. And when you have a king of a city state that was weak, in some cases, such conflicts degenerated to civil wars. But with a strong king, they were able to maintain growth. But one unique thing and very interesting thing was that there were slaves actually in these houses, in each of these um, houses, but they were not subjected to terrible slavery condition. They were also given some level of opportunity to work, to thread under the guidelines of their house, of the house where they belong. And also to grow to a point that even free men also may not even be able to attain. So that's, that was one unique thing. That's why I said this system or this house system was highly very unique. And uh, based on my little research in uh, African history, I don't think I've come across any other area that, have, that has such unique political structure. It was unique. All right, the, the, the pressure of disagreements created a lot of rivalries. And in some cases, as I said, where weak kings could not control their city states, there were issues of civil wars. But the, there's one interesting group of people that really tried to work towards settling this, this challenge. That was, that, 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 was the, that, that was actually the ethic people, the ethic society. The ethic people created a social solution to take care of this rivalry, mainly based on protecting the kingship structure. Well, let me really read also the presentation of uh, J.C. Anele before we do some more analysis. He said he stated that among the ethic, they are evolved. A remarkable, social, a remarkable society known as the Ebe Society, which enforced peace and order, safeguarded the interests and privileges of the nobility, and kept the women, slaves, and masses of the, popul of the population in subjugation. Let me re re read it again. Among the ethic there evolved a remarkable society known as the Ebe Society, which enforced peace and order, safeguarded the interests and privileges of the nobility, and kept the women, slaves, and masses of the population in subjugation. The Ebe Society, which some historians we are referring to as a secret society, we are basically involved in trying to maintain the powers, the control, the influence of the king in order to keep unity or to maintain unity in their city-states. Well, to, to, to a certain level, it got to a point also, they, they attained the status of kingmakers, that you could not become king without the interest or impute of the urban society. 
But basically, the their main control, their main basis of function was to maintain peace. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, I just started and thought about the mention of subjugation. Sub the sub subjugation was not actually mainly on a negative capacity. In the sense that slaves and other people in the society were also given their right to expression to business act uh, activities. Not really subjugated to terrible um, slavery conditions. Some persons have tried to Use some use this uh, uh, development. Try to analyze to to give um, reference or to give differentiation between slavery in Africa and slavery in in Europe and other parts of the world before or during the transatlantic slave trade. If you look at the if you go to the New World on Europe, we are some blacks that moved down as slaves. They were highly subjugated to terrible conditions. But in most places in Africa, slave, slavery was not a thing that, 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 that brought people to high level of subjugation. In the Niger Delta area, in the Niger Delta city states, slaves were given the same condition of freedom of oppression in, in comparison with the free bonds. And slaves, in most cases, some of them even became very worthy, worthier than the free bonds. So, well, and the status of slavery was not actually, uh, you know, enshrined on them, and which made their daily life miserable. It was a very unique political structure. The house system was just a coming together, or the, the collaboration of group of families, and other members that are not that were not even part of the family, but they come together to protect their business interests under the leadership of a chief or a head. And this head works in hand in hand with the king of the city states. But there's another unique thing you have to understand. In most areas, the if not in all those areas, mainly most of the, of the areas, let me not really say all, all the city states, the kingship status was not based on hereditary capacity. The hereditary capacity wasn't part of the kingship status. In some areas, there were some level of, um, um, even some level of political engagement towards who becomes the king of a city state. If you go to the Niger Delta area today, this structure somehow exists. Like some areas where, before you become a king in a community which was actually the, the, the outcome of this city, this house system polit uh, political structure. They go through voting. You are made to go through normal political system where you vote or you are voted for. You show your interest and go, go through the political uh, situation and let people know. Although where there are still areas, there were still areas, as at that time, even till now, that, had, that has a level of hereditary structure. But most of them didn't have the hereditary structure. You can really see how unique the house political structure was. Thank you for being part of this channel. If you are watching us for the very first time, please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification icon. We seek your support in any way you can for us to be able to sustain this channel and as well bring in more persons that will help us to creates better and quality contents in African history. Thanks for being part of this channel.